Good morning. You're listening to Retake Our Democracy, a 30-minute weekly show that airs at 8.30 a.m. each Saturday morning on KSFR 101.1 FM, your Santa Fe public radio station. And I'm Paul Gibson, the host of Retake Our Democracy. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Rochelle Williams, co-founder of the Blue CD2, an organization founded to, to retake CD2 for the Democrats. Last week, we spoke with Gabe Vasquez, Democratic candidate for the U.S. House District CD2. So you may be detecting a pattern. We'll get to Rochelle in just a minute, but first a couple of announcements. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge that we are conducting the show on stolen Tewa land, and we want to thank our Tewa labor neighbors for being such good stewards of that land. We need to learn from them and learn from them very quickly. Um, I also want to remind you that in addition to our work on the general election, Retake is beginning to focus on the 2023 legislative session. We're getting started early this year, and we've developed a Zoom in our series that started um, uh, a couple of weeks ago with Miranda Viscoli um, and uh, a student activist, Janae Martinez from Albuquerque, and it was an incredible Zoom in our very interesting information, and we laid out kind of what might be possible in the 2023 legislative session about um, New Mexico um, gun violence prevention. And um, this this show is being recorded on, uh, what is today, July 15th, and is not gonna air until July 30th. And so there is another Zoominar on July 27th that obviously if you're listening to the show you will have missed or you attended and you know how great it was but that was just to give you a sense of the sequencing of our zoominars that is one on uh, a paid state legislature um, that's what that zoom is about and uh, we had two legislators on helica rubio and um, christina ortez on along with uh, two activists and you can get those, both of those Zoominars were recorded and you can get them at retakeourdemocracy.org and go over to the actions and events link in the menu bar on the homepage, click on that. And you'll have to scroll through some descriptions of other Zoominars that are coming, which we haven't figured out yet. Um, but um, that then you will get down there and you'll see the, the Zoom in our recordings and you'll be able to see what, uh, what you missed and they're very worthwhile. Um, we're, we're gonna also be doing Zoom in ours on public banking in August and then another on public power in September. And in October, we're gonna be doing one on health security. And also I just finished talking with people from the mayor's office in Santa Fe. And we're gonna be doing a really interesting Zoom in our on uh, global basic in, in, not global, um, guaranteed basic income program in, in Santa Fe. And uh, that's, that's going to be well worth your time. Um, I want to remind you, if you're driving around and miss any of today's show or any of the other shows, go to retakeourdemocracy.org and click on the actions and events menu. And you can find all of our recorded shows going back a couple of years. And uh, so you can binge out sometime and watch scores of shows for free. How fun is that? Okay, so that's enough uh, information. Let's get to our, our guest. Hello, Rochelle, how are you? Good morning, I'm well, thanks, and you? I'm good, welcome to the show. Thank so you. I'd like to let our guests introduce themselves. So can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in activism generally and Blue CD2 specifically? I was just a regular voter my whole life, uh, and um, I was actually a registered independent until my significant other convinced me of the need to vote in primaries, and that happened about, oh, probably 10 or 15 years ago, and I registered as a Democrat, and I tell you, it's a slippery slope. I slid down it, and I'm now a political junkie. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, do Roxanne and I know that story. <laughs> but... Um, in terms of activism, it was 2016, of course. I mean, um, I fully expected to have our first woman president and um, I voted for Hillary Clinton and she did win the popular vote. And I was um, outraged, uh, um, uh, you know, that this country had quote elected basically 
somebody who appeared to me to be a, a completely unserious madman. Um, and there was fear, uh, anxiety, um, despair, hopelessness, all of these horrible feelings and I had to do something with them. So I began writing um, letters to, um, with Vote Forward and postcards to voters. I found that very a very satisfying way to channel that, um, you know, angst into action, and um, and I that's that's what led me in uh, developing this group is because people needed something to do, and I really wanted to organize um, activism that was easily accessible to everybody, and for to keep you know keep our hands busy with good work. Okay, well, that's a very similar story to Roxanne and I. We got started with, uh, unfortunately, it was a different story in terms of our, ours was Bernie Sanders. We were really hoping he would win. and uh, But then when he didn't get the nomination, you know, we supported Hillary strongly and had that same moment on that night when you suddenly realized that, oh, my God, it's really going to happen. And you just, I, I just, I'll never forget that sense of just disbelief, like this couldn't have happened. I could start crying thinking about it right now. Yep. Um, so tell us a little bit about Blue CD2 and what it is and what you do. I, I'm so excited about this group. It, it kind of erupted spontaneously out of this, uh, you know, similar feeling of shock and horror that this person had been elected. She's a true extremist. And, um, and, so uh, there, somebody formed a Facebook group, group called Remove a Vet, and I got on there and watched the conversations for a while, and and saw that there wasn't, you know, there wasn't specific action that had been identified that people could take. And then um, somebody posted some historical voting data for this district on that group, and I found it fascinating. And I, I just called her up, and we had a chat. I wondered, being fairly new. Um, I, I bought my house here in Tularosa 20 years ago, but I had a business in Albuquerque, which kept kept me there I'll, most of the time until I retired, which was two years ago. And I moved back here to my home. And um, so I, I wasn't familiar with the history of the district. And we visited about it. I thought, I started to wonder why why this is consistently historically a red district. And the last person to hold the office as a Democrat for more than one term was Runnels in the 80s. I think he had three terms, but since then, it's been in, in Republican hands, except for Harry Teague in, I think, 2010. Uh, I might be wrong about that. And and then Xochitl. I campaigned for Xochitl. We all walked our shoes off for her. We were so thrilled when she was elected and horrified when she lost. So it was about channeling again that energy. And a couple of phone calls later, we it, she invited a few friends, I invited a few friends, and then we were on Zoom calls and we had 70 people. So um, that was the uh, genesis of Blue CD2 New Mexico. And um, we voted uh, right away to organize as an indivisible group. And then we encountered some issues with um, fundraising and uh, constraints on what we could raise and spend. So we formed a state PAC for the period between then and when we needed to move into a federal PAC in order to support or oppose a federal candidate. So we're all of those things. We're an indivisible group, a state PAC and a federal PAC. And um, we formed committees right away. Our most important committee is the messaging committee. Uh, Sally Davis is our messaging chair, and she has done an, a, a fabulous job of diving into uh, messaging um, uh, strategies from a national mes messaging strategist. So we, we follow that deeply. We uh, study it. We uh, use it to shape the messaging that we have developed, and we're, we're real proud of our messaging, and we want people to amplify it. So um, one of the biggest things that... Uh, anyone can do is go to our website, click on the free graphics link at the top, look at those images, those, gra those graphics, um, download them, put them on your own social media networks and, and amplify those messages. That, that would help us more than anything. 
Okay, well, we will write about that in one of our blogs and encourage people to do that. Great. Um, is much of your messaging about the importance of maintaining democratic control of the House, or does it relate more to CD2 issues? Well, I regard uh, CD2 issues as the same as uh, same issues for Democrats everywhere, for really for people everywhere. Our democracy is uh, on fire and in serious danger. And so, you know, the, the real choice is, do you want to elect people who are going to burn it down to the ground? Or do you want to elect people who will support uh, human rights and, and values that, that are common to all of us? Um, there are some specific issues in, in CD2. Uh, one is, you know, these uncapped methane wells that are contributing to uh, our, our um, pollution, our climate um, carbon footprint. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, immigration, of course, the border issues. And um, I, I would like to talk about messaging a little bit more because it, it is perhaps the most important thing that we do, that we all can do. And we have been inundated with misinformation, disinformation, not just from the right wing, but from our mainstream media channels. Um, and our job as individuals and as groups is to pierce through that veil, to tell the truth, to reframe things properly, and to amplify those messages. Okay. That's, and you're right, that is important. That's what retake is all about, is trying to penetrate the media and give you real information to motivate you to get involved. Because if you have the <laughs> real information, you're gonna get motivated. Um, so from your view, what are the key issues that CD2 Democrats care about and that you have developed messaging about? Well, um, you know, that basic, the basic, uh, let's, let's help, democracy survive, that's number one. And voting rights, of course, is, is crucial to that. And um, uh, the uh, civil rights, the right to privacy that women just lost, half our population just lost the right to privacy. And we know that if, if this goes in the direction it appears to be going, uh, they won't stop there. You, you know, that um, peop all, people of all persuasions will be next on the chopping block. Um, fair taxation, a just economy, um, uh, the climate crisis. I mean, these are issues for everybody. But I wanna talk for a moment about Yvette's voting record and why it's so egregious. She votes against her constituents. An example is um, one in eight people in New Mexico are diabetic. She voted to cap, not to cap the price of insulin. She voted against that bill. She voted against um, broadband, which we need in, in rural areas so desperately. She voted against um, funding fire suppression in one of the worst uh, fire years in New Mexico's history. And um, she votes against veterans. Every, every time she has an opportunity to support veterans, she votes against them. She voted against the bill that would have allowed um, veterans to transition directly to VA care as they move out of active duty. And now she's voted against the, the support for um, veterans exposed to toxic fumes and, and burn pits. And um, fortunately, you know, most of those things passed because we have that, we don't really even have a majority, but we have a tie. <laughs> We've got a majority, a slim majority in the House and that tie in the Senate, which is making these, these bills possible. But Yvette does not support them. She votes against them. She votes against her constituents. Okay, well, that, that's quite a list of, uh, of votes. So you've got a lot of ammo there. I need to take a short break here to remind our listeners that KSFR is more important now than ever in these times of misinformation. KSFR delivers you democracy now every day every weekday and, and great news programming that gives you the facts about what's going on in New Mexico. They also offer a wide range of cultural, um, cultural tel uh, radio, um, mu music and the arts, and of course, political issues like this. Um, it's great to have KSFR. And if uh, you've got a little bit of change in your pocket or uh, when you're done with the radio, when we're done with the radio show, maybe if you can go to ksfr.org 
and click on the donate button and toss them 10, 20, 30 bucks and view it as your ticket for admission to a lot of great programming. They really need it. They have engineers to pay, sound engineers, and an engineering studio to, to maintain. So let's get back to Rochelle. Um, how has redistricting reshaped CD2 district boundaries and the chances of flipping the district? We have a very good chance of flipping this district, but we are not taking anything for granted. Um, we, uh, we gained some Democrats in redistricting. We lost some deep red areas down in the southeast corner of uh, the district. And um, yeah, Teresa would like to thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but you, you know, she's so spectacular. I, I think she, she'll win regardless. I mean, she'll, she'll win those people over. Um, so uh, I was thrilled and I followed the redistricting fairly closely and it seemed like such a fair redistricting to me because now we have population wise three equivalent districts and um, you know Democrats aren't all concentrated in Albuquerque and, and Santa Fe so I was thrilled about that and in terms of numbers, we just ran these this morning from the post redistricting um, data. We're now 44% Democrats, 30% Republicans, and 24% declined to state in this district. And our, our majority group is non voters. Really? Yes. So you, need, you need an inspiring candidate. Where did you come up with Gabe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so thrilled that uh, Gabe just decided to run and we totally support him. We will go to the mat and the wall for him. That's what we're all about. But we have 128,000 uh, Democrats and independents or declined to state who did not vote in 2020. Those are the people that we want to reach and turn out. Okay. And, and how are you doing that? Well, we have a, a multi-pronged strategy. Uh, one is this messaging. Messaging is so important, especially right now. So um, we offer Words That Win workshops. We can do those with any group that wants them, and we're happy to schedule that. We, we love to do them, and, and they're so informative and helpful. They've helped me talk to my own family and friends. We, you, you kind of learn a different language. It's a way of um, engaging the base, um, or motivating the, the base, um, persuading the middle, and, and pushing those who are uh, in opposition just away. They, they don't like what we're talking about. So, you know, but it's, it's very effective messaging. Um, and then we started out uh, in March or April of 2021, a lot, a lot long lead time. So we wanted to be doing something effective right away. We partnered with SEAL Team 6 to register Democrats here. And um, uh, we got a list from them of 30,000 um, people in CD2 who are not registered to vote, who according to data analysis, likely lean Democrat if you ask them to vote. So we began in July with our postcard campaigns and we have 280 volunteers are all around the state, not just the district, who sent out 90,000 90, postcards to this list between July and January. And they were, um, you know, the, the postcards did double duty. They didn't just ask you to register to vote. They told you why. So we gave them what, what the, um, you know, what the infrastructure bill was doing, how, uh, how these bills benefited their communities. We gave them uh, reasons to vote for Democrats. And um, that was, uh, you know, that and developing our, our messaging strategies are what we've spent the first year and year and a half working on and, um, and actually doing. And the, the big piece in our budget and in our focus is our get out the vote program. And again, we, we are working with um, or actually modeling after another successful organization. It's called Sisters United Alliance. They're in Texas. 
and they have um, since 2016 in cycle after cycle, they have reached and turned out 30% of registered Democratic women who either have never voted or only voted once. They've turned these people out at, at 30%. So they, they send postcards, they, they do dig, digital ad contacts and something called programmatic ads. Those are the kind that follow you around and are so annoying on your phone and your laptop. And, and um, anyway, we're, we're working with a, a media company. Um, we have identified, one of the first things we did was invest in, in data. We bought van data and we've enriched that data with uh, emails and phone numbers and, and um, voter preferences. So we can drill down into very specific things like young men who are interested in XYZ, you know, gun safety or, or, or who are climate alarmed or who are pro-choice. And we can identify those people and um, reach them with targeted advertising. Okay, well, that sounds like you've got the right idea. Um, many people in New Mexico view Yvette Harrell as basically an embarrassing Trump psychopath. But are there pockets of CD2 where she is liked significantly? I'm sure there are. And I, I want to spend as little time as possible talking about that because I want to talk about uh, the solution to that problem. Okay. Um, Fair enough. So, Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, Yvette isn't helping anyone, and and our job is to tell people that and to tell them how she's not helping them, how she's actually hurting them, and why they should vote for, for Gabe. So CD2 now extends up into Albuquerque. I'm guessing you have been encouraging canvassing there. How can folks in Albuquerque get in touch with Vasquez campaign and canvas for Gabe? Yeah, uh, I don't have a aligned to Gabe's campaign. So I would suggest just going to his website um, and we could say the URL. Would that be helpful? Sure. Gabe for um, Congress. I'm sorry? Gabe for Congress. Gabe for Congress, That's yes. Awesome. And, um, and, and it's there's with F-O-R, not the number for it. And there's a great group of uh, very active Democrats on the West side. And I'm uh, I think the thing to do is go directly to Gabe's website and, and volunteer there. We want volunteers too, but, you know, uh, we are telling our volunteers um, because we can't uh, share strategy or information like that, if they want to help out in specific ways with Gabe's campaign, just go, you know, to the website and, and volunteer and make that connection. Okay. Okay. So I've seen some articles discussing that uh, that Hispanics are drifting to the GOP. Why do you suppose that is? And have you seen evidence of this in CD2? I'm going to sound like a broken record here because uh, I think that is all because of the, this being uh, just inundated with disinformation. Uh, um, right wing interests went around buying up Spanish language radio stations a few years ago. And there hasn't been any pushback until now. Now there's some Democrats buying up those radio stations. One of our programs or projects is advertising on Spanish radio. And we have a Facebook fundraising ad up right now to fund that. We need $12,000 to do that effectively. We've already got the ads developed. We just need to raise the funds to do it. And I think that um, uh, the the economic message is is critical to deliver to that demographic, but then you know the the messages of civic duty and responsibility and and and, and social justice those those are equally important. Okay, well we're almost out of time here, so I want to give you a chance to tell people how they can get in touch with you, how they can find your Facebook page, how they can contribute to the ad campaign. Tell us. Please go to the website, bluecd2nm.com. Anyone is welcome to call me personally, 575-430-5280. I'd love to um, get you involved. Ha we, we need volunteers all the time. We, we need to, an event coordinator. We need people to show up for farmer's markets. We need all sorts of things. So give me a call. Go to the website. We have a volunteer sign-up form on there. We'd love to talk with you. 
I'm guessing that you also have things like uh, ways in which you can uh, do more postcards or write yes. letters and things like that. Yep, it's we're just getting an, another postcard campaign started. Okay, that's great. So I've seen reports that CD2 is now 5149 Democrat. You gave me some different information. 44, was it 33 GOP? Uh, we just ran these numbers this morning uh, from publicly available data. It's 44% Democrats, 30% Republicans, and decline to state is 24%. So my tally is that if we get um, half of the DTSs, it's 56 to 30. And I, I, after I talked to Gabe, uh, when I interviewed him today for, the ra for a radio show coming up the week before this will air, um, when I got off, I went and found my wife and said, Gabe's going to win 60-40. Um, it's just like, he, he's phenomenal. And so anyone listening to this program right now, make sure when you get done listening to this, you go to retakeourdemocracy.org and click on retake on the radio and look for Gabe's interview because you, you listen to him for 30 minutes and you're going to be uh, ponying up some change to support the campaign and getting on some tennis shoes and going out and doing some canvassing. I know Roxanne and I will. So thank you very much for being with us today, Rochelle. I appreciate your time. And uh, that's all the time. Thank you. We have. That's all the time we have for today. Um, but I would like to let you know, listeners, I've been promising a show on um, global basic guaranteed basic income pilots in New Mexico. And now that I have some time, because I've got now three shows in the, in the can, as they say, um, I've got three weeks to get ready for the next show. And uh, I'm pretty sure we will have someone on guaranteed basic income. So um, my message to all of you out there is to stay safe and healthy, but most of all, stay engaged and active. It's the only way we fix this mess. Thank you very much, Rochelle. It sounds like the program is a tremendous one. CD2 Thanks for having me. LouCD2.com. Take care, everyone. We'll be back next week. Bye-bye.